we're gonna play around with a manual tuner. When I first got started in the hobby, manual tuners were ridiculously intimidating. There's a whole lot of stuff going on that doesn't make any sense. Pi networks, L networks, inductors, capacitors, air variable capacitors, tuning coils, shorting the coil, balance line, coax. There's just so much going on when you're brand new. I'm gonna try and demystify some of that and share some of the experiences that I had as a new ham playing around with a manual tuner and where I went wrong and hopefully it will help you not go wrong when you try to do the same thing. Manual tuners are pretty uh, prevalent at ham fest. They're usually a pretty good deal and they work out fantastically well. Let me take a look, flip around the camera, show you what we're looking at. So this is the MFJ Deluxe Versa Tuner 2. This is the model 949E. And what you'll recognize right away is these three knobs here. You'll see these three knobs in a couple of different variations. This one just switches between the dummy load that's built into this and the uh, two coax for two different antennas and balanced wire and then a couple of other things this thing does plug into 12 volts all the 12 volts get you is the light you don't need any power for it and i can't turn the light on because i don't have it plugged into 12 volts it does a peak and average meter reading so i can switch it from peak to average there sorry 30 to 300 watt range and peak to average there um, Inside of this thing is a humongous uh, balance, so you don't really need to even worry about it. I wanna say off the top of my head, I know I'm probably wrong, but I wanna say it's like 1600 to one to give you an idea of the, the balance that's in here. And it has all of the transformers inside in order to make that balance, all of the inductors and capacitors inside to make that balance work. And what we're working with today is that 100 meter doublet. There's a link in the description down below. I just wanted an antenna that needed a tuner. This one happens to be up and up in the air. So let's get it plugged in. Um, and in order to do that, we've got a couple of things going on here in the back. We have the balance wire connection here, which is where my 450 ohm ladder line is going in, but you can just as easily use coax and switch between two of those. So this would be a three-way antenna switch to one radio. It's got the 12 volt DC input down here, and then it will do a balanced line or a wire antenna. And if you're doing a balanced line, then you need to put this jumper in play here, which I've got. So we've got the ladder line plugged into the balance line section. We've got coax to the radio. And today's radio of choice, it's the 705. I'm outdoors and it's portable. So we're gonna do a real quick demonstration on how to get this thing tuned up. Let me get the radio hooked up to the tuner and we'll be right back. All right, and so even without tuning this thing up, we've already got uh, signals on the band. That's kind of the way receiving works, but not the way tuning works. And if you do get it into tune, you are going to hear better, is my opinion. I feel like I hear better when everything's in tune. I don't know if that's real or not, but I mean, we're already hearing some pretty good signals here. 20 meters is doing really well this morning. And so what you want to do is get to a point where you know there's some noise on the band. I'm going to go right down. This is a pro tip from... A friend of mine, I'm going to go right down to the FT8 section where I know that there's always signals. I'm going to turn the mic up so I can hear it. And then I'm going to come over here. I'm going to tune the big inductor. And I guess we're not far enough out for it to matter all that much. So let me see if I can find some static instead. There's some noise. And it just went away. And it's just back. So what you're looking for here is the most amount of noise. And those FDA signals were too strong for that. Yeah, so you can hear it go away. A little bit hard to hear over some of the wind noise and the road noise, but you can hear it go away a little bit. Next up, you want to check your meter, and you want to be in something that puts some noise on the wire. SSB signals don't put any noise on the wire, so you won't get any reflected signal back. So let's go back over to the meter, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Go back over to the scope, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So we're we're in a clear enough area right here. There's nothing in the band right here. 
And if I'm on ready and I key down, I'm hitting the push to talk button on the microphone and I key down, you'll see that yellow line. That yellow line means I'm putting some signal out into the wire. If I switch back to a single sideband and I do the same thing, see how there's not a whole lot of power until I start talking? And those are my voice peaks. And uh, that's not what you want to have, Kilo Mike 9 Golf. That's not what you want to have for your tuning purposes. <laughs> that's uh, that's SSTV signals. And I've got a video on decoding SSTV signals. So we'll get out of the SSTV area into another clear spot. We're in a nice clear spot here. And what I'll do is I will switch over to ready mode and then I will switch back to meter mode and we'll take a look at this meter right here on the radio. And we are at infinity on SWR, so not a good place to be. So what we will do, and I need more hands for this than I have right now. Let me get the camera on the tripod and we'll see what we can do. Okay, so we've got an interesting close-up going on here, but I'm trying to get the, the background sunlight out of the way. And like I said, we've got infinity SWR here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start moving the knobs. I'm going to do two different showings. I'm going to show you how it looks on the radio as I move the knobs around. There we go. There you go. So what I was doing was I was moving the knobs on the front of the tuner around and I was watching the SWR meter and you saw it go up and down. You heard the big click, which was me tapping the, the primary inductor inside of the tuner and finding what the best match was. And if we look back on the front of the tuner itself, what we're looking for, there's two needles. There's one going off to the left and there's one going off to the right. And what you're trying to find out is where they cross. And where they cross is right there, which puts you at about one to one, which is what we saw on the front of the radio. But it gets a little hard because my first mistake as a brand new ham was not reading where the needles cross. I was trying to get one of these needles to move somewhere. And the only one that was moving was this other one over here. And I didn't have enough knowledge to know what was going on. Now I'm a couple of years into this and I know what's going on. So. What you would do is you would get it all tuned up with your antenna and then you'd write this down in a notebook that I want it at seven and a half and J and four. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move this out of the way, we're gonna move this out of the way, we're gonna move that out of the way, and we're gonna play that same game, but we're gonna use this meter now. So if you look at it, see how I moved over? I'm like six to one, somewhere between six to one and infinity to one if you look at this. And we're back at that point where I don't have enough hands. So move this center inductor over to J where we knew it was and you can't really see much of a movement there and then let's see if I can get this thing set up so I can use both hands because you can't do this with one hand because I need one hand to tune and one hand to push the talk so hang on one second okay so here we are we've got the camera back on the tripod we're looking back at it and I was on K I couldn't even see that right so let's put that down to J and our meters still aren't crossing very well here, but that's okay. So we start looking around for where they move. And you can see it walking around a bit. There we go. And there you go. Once you know what you're doing, it's not too hard to do. So J, seven, one or two. And we're right back where we, where we belong on the tuner. And this will work, again, I'm out in the field. As you can see, there's grass on the ground over there. I've got a portable radio at five watts, and we can tune this thing in. All I have is the battery power in the radio. There's no power to this. This is pulling forward and reflected power off of the coax wires. And there you have it. So hopefully that demystifies it a little bit for you. 
There's two ways to do it. I think that doing it with the SWR meter in the radio is better. Even though I say that the meter in the radio is better, that's better for me, but I still think that using these cross needle meters is an experience, it's something that you should learn. Those needles, cross needle meters are in everything from power meters, signal strength meters, SWR meters, tuners, amplifiers, radios, you name it, it's in there and you'll see it in one flavor or another and getting used to it is probably pretty important. They're not that mysterious once you figure it out and hopefully this video helped you figure it out. So with that, I will sign off and I will say thanks for being awesome. We'll see you in the next one.